Jews and Christians hold a special status within Islam because of the Muslim belief that God revealed his will and guidance through his prophets, including Ibrahim or Abraham, Musa or Moses, and Isa or Jesus, peace be upon all of them. Even though the belief that every child is born monotheistic, the actual religion of Islam came into being after Judaism and Christianity once the Quran was revealed. So, for instance, had the Muslims of today been living in Jesus, or Isa's, peace be upon him's time, and the last prophet had not come yet, then the Muslims would consider themselves Christians. Verily, we did send down the Torah to Musa, or Moses, peace be upon him, therein was guidance and light, by which the prophets, who submitted themselves to Allah's will, judged the Jews. The Quran chapter 5 verse 44. And remember, when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am a messenger of Allah, unto you confirming the Torah, which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmed. But when he, Ahmed, or Muhammad, came to them with clear proofs, they said, This is plain magic. Quran 61 6. The Muslims actually believe when Jesus, peace be upon him, talks about a comforter that God will send after him, who they believe to be Muhammad, peace be upon him, found in the book of John, where he is named the Spirit of Truth. Before Muhammad, peace be upon him, became a prophet, he was known for his truthfulness in all affairs. Muslims believe that God appointed special people to become prophets and messengers to guide humanity and receive revelations from God through the angel Gabriel or Jibreel. These special people are only human and do not have any divine powers, but in certain instances, God may give them special abilities to produce miracles, but only through the will of God. God sent them to teach the humans the correct path and to confirm the teachings of the previous prophets. The first prophet sent was prophet Adam, peace be upon him and the last was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and there were many in between, like Noah or Nah, Moses or Musa, David or Dawood, Abraham or Ibrahim, Aaron or Harun, Solomon or Soleiman, Job or Ayub, Joseph or Yusuf, Jesus or Isa, and many more that are not even mentioned in the books before the Quran may peace be upon all of them. The Quran even states that every single nation was sent a warner or messenger, and there are more messengers not even mentioned in the Quran. A hadith or confirmed witness account from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, the prophets are like brothers from the same father with different mothers. Their religion is one, Islam, although their sharia, the rules of the religion, differ. And I am the most deserving of Prophet Jesus, or Isa, there was no other prophet between me and him. Speaking of Prophet Jesus, or Isa, peace be upon him, the Quran has a whole chapter or surah named after Jesus' mother, Mary, peace be upon him, and the people of his household, and her divine pregnancy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made happen without the use of any man. It even goes on to say that baby Jesus, peace be upon him, was speaking from the cradle in Quran chapter 19 verse 33 and peace is on me the day I was born and the day I will die and the day I am raised alive that's right Muslims believe that one day Prophet Jesus peace be upon him will come again to fight the false Messiah or the Dajjal and will address the people speaking only the truth to set things straight amongst those who differ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made known for all believers the Son of Mary will soon descend among you and will judge justly according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will break the cross and kill the pig. That is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. So Jesus, peace be upon him, holds a truly special place in the Quran and to believers and is believed to be like all the other prophets sent, to be an absolutely beautiful role model for humanity. And God actually claims in the Quran to clear the misconception up that it is not befitting for Allah to take a son, exalted is he. When he decrees an affair, he only says to it, be, and it is. Quran 1935. Thus, Muslims believe Christ, peace be upon him, was not divine, but as a prophet and messenger, 
pointing to the contradictions in the gospel in Mark 10, 18, where it says, And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Also, in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in the garden of Gethsemane, when Christ, peace be upon him, cried out and prayed to God on his knees, as in the same practice that Muslims are taught. And it's worth mentioning that the stories about prophets in the Quran are so valuable and ethical that any sin that any prophet ever did was something so small, so much so, that one would never find a major sin done by a prophet, like backbiting, stealing, cheating, or etc. To mention some notable points about the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Quran is not the most abundant source since it reveals very little about him, peace be upon him. That's why there are hadiths, authentic written or narrated accounts that have been thoroughly collected over time and verified by scholarly sources. Since there is a large number of hadiths and since Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the final messenger closest to our time, living up until 63, unlike other prophets who died early, we are left with the largest amount of personal teachings from God through his stories. So it would make sense that Muslims constantly refer to the Prophet Muhammad's, peace be upon him, stories when any matters or disputes arise. Also, there are a mass extent of extra details from the stories that are not attained in the Quran, like how one should conduct themselves when visiting others, or how one should attend funerals, deal with money, or even how to clean oneself well and be hygienic. God mentions in the Quran, verily, you have in the Prophet of Allah an excellent model for him who fears Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah much. Quran 33, 22. And in chapter 21, verse 108, stating, And we have sent thee not, but as a mercy for all peoples. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was claimed to be 40 years old when he, peace be upon him, became a prophet and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to send revelations down. All accurate accounts tell about how Muhammad, peace be upon him, could not read or write, and it's also stated by God in the Quran where God says, Those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Gospel. Chapter 7 verse 157 From a very early age in life, Muhammad, peace be upon him, became an orphan, where he had a wet nurse that raised him in the desert of Mecca, and then at age 25, he married a widow named Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, who was 40 years old, and together they had two sons who died while infants, and four daughters, only one of them outliving her father. Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, passed away shortly at age 64, but she was there before and after Muhammad, peace be upon him, became a prophet, and she was a constant support, and some who were close to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and lucky enough, even got to witness the revelations from God descend upon him, peace be upon him. After her death, he, peace be upon him, also went on to marry many other women who God had instructed, who were either widows or divorcees, many of them had orphan children that needed support, and all but one was of middle or, or older age. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in fear that people would come to start worshipping him, to the point where he warned people about attributing lies to him and having their seat in the fire, peace be upon him. Do not exaggerate about me as was exaggerated about Isa, or Jesus, son of Miriam. Say, the slave of Allah and his messenger, al-Bukhari. After Muhammad's peace be upon him's death, the closest companion and Khalifa Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, stated, O people, if any one of you worships Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. But if any one of you worships God, God is alive and immortal. And Muhammad is not but a messenger. Messengers had passed away before him. Why, if he should die or is slain, will you turn upon your heels? Quran 3 verse 144. Thus, even in a Muslim's daily prayer or the Shahada, they are reminded and must bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a slave and messenger, just like Abraham or Ibrahim, peace be upon him, who is also mentioned in the prayer, since he's the father of all nations. There are five major pillars of Islam, the Shahada, confession of faith, the Salat, prayer, Psalm, Ramadan, the observance and fasting in Ramadan, 
zakat or almsgiving, and the hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. The shahada is a testimony or the confession of faith one must take when they want to convert to Islam. The first part testifies your belief in the one God, and the second part testifies your belief that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a slave and the last messenger or prophet of God. The imam or religious leader may make sure to ask the person before taking the shahada if anyone has forced them or coerced them into doing it because the Quran makes very clear in chapter 2 verse 256 that there is no compulsion in religion. So that person has to want to do it on their own account solely. When a disbeliever becomes Muslim and testifies, they are cleansed of all their previous sins and start a clean slave. This is also the first pillar of Islam. A Muslim prays five times a day. This is what God made mandatory for Muslims. Many people get super busy with their lives and forget to pray, but prayer is the last and only remaining communication we have with God. So the times of the prayer constantly help people to stop and give thanks and communicate to God. Otherwise, our relationship with God would become so weak. There are also basic supplications that are necessary too that are called du'a. These are the prayers you can make at any time, anywhere you'd like. Muslims make wudu a form of washing and purifying themselves before standing before Allah to perform the five prayers. Just like the story of Musa or Moses, peace be upon him, and the other prophets, Muslims even take off their shoes and wash their feet before standing before God. Some people may try to pray to God but are unsure how to start the prayer off or even what or how to pray to the God who is so mighty and worthy of praise so the five daily prayers were created by God to teach Muslims the way he wants to be praised. Muslims stand in the direction of Mecca, which houses the Kaaba, the house of Allah, the black cube-like structure, Ibrahim, peace be upon him, or Abraham, and Ismail, peace be upon him, or Ishmael, built together from instruction of God. This is the same shrine or structure God ordered Abraham to build in the desert with his wife Hagar, or Hajar, and the chapter of Genesis in the Bible. This is the very first holy house and guidance for all beings to pray towards because some people back then were arguing about which way they should pray facing towards. This is the same house that Muslims make their pilgrimage to yearly that they circle around praying. Many people believe that Muslims worship the Kaaba, but this is obviously not true. Muslims only worship the sole creator. Ramadan is a period of time that comes annually and marks the month when the Holy Quran was revealed. Allah instructs Muslims to abstain from their human desires and discipline themselves to devotion of God during this time, which includes fasting from sunup to sundown and many other things like abstaining from foul speech and increasing good deeds, which help Muslims reestablish their core beliefs, strengthen the connection to Allah, work on their character and conduct, as well as many other positive things. There are also many rules such as if you break your fast, how to make it up and feed the hungry and how certain people may be excused from fasting due to health, age and many other reasons. Ramadan is a time for gratitude and restore. Zakat is a fixed amount of money contribution every Muslim must donate once a year that is meant to help contribute to benefit the poor and needy. It is then distributed to prescribed beneficiaries and for the well-being of society in general. Islam considers the woman as an independent legal entity with rights and duties of her own. Therefore, every Muslim, man or woman, child or adult, whose wealth exceeds the nisab, the minimum zakatable amount, must pay at the minimum basic rate of 2.5% in the form of taxes if one's wealth is in money, of your standing wealth. This Sharia ruling set the deep guidelines which form the first welfare state in existence today. The Hajj is a journey each Muslim, if they can afford it, must try and make once in their lifetime to visit the sacred Kaaba and perform ritual tasks instructed by God to show their reverence to God. Some of these ritual tasks are based upon religious prominent figures such as Hajar or Hagar who ran back and forth through the valley in search of water in the desert and reverence to Ibrahim or Abraham and Ismail or Ishmael, may peace be upon all of them. After one performs all their duties properly during Hajj, 
They return as pure, free of sin as the day their mothers gave birth to them.